You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive content. Hi everyone and welcome to a special part of the Scottish Football Show right here on SM Media. I'm Scott McPike, delighted to be your host as always. Joined by Mark Shanklin. Shankers, how are we doing? Hi, I'm good, Scott. As good as we can be for a, a Thursday night. Brilliant. Lachlan Higgins here as well. Lachlan, how are we? I'm all right, mate. How are you? Not bad at all. How's your... We'll get into this before we get in. How's your turkey? Performance? <laughs> no, they're, they're just saving it for the final, mate. So... <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. We're doing a special part of the Scottish Football Show where we're going to take a look at the upcoming West of Scotland Football League Premier Division. We're going to preview all 20 teams. We spoke to people from all 20 teams. We're going to do a special five-part series. We're going to start with Monday. We are going to do Auchin Lake, Lags, Beath and Rutherglen. Tuesday, Irvine Meadow, Clydebank, Cumnock and Kirkintilla, Rob Roy. Wednesday, Glenafton, Darville, Troon, Cumbernauld. Thursday, Pollock, Hurlford, Benburb and Blantyre Vicks. And Friday, Cowan and Rossville, Coburnie and Bonneton. Shankers, how excited are you for the season to start again? I, I think, I was talking to Lachlan yesterday and I think we're just glad that there's some football happening again. And last last season it was a wee bit of, you look forward to it, but there's always that element of doubt for the season's actually starting this year with good dates, fixtures. So we're, we're ready to go and just can't kind of wait. Fit, I know pre-season game this weekend and then looking forward to the league starting next week at home to play Barn. Brilliant. Lachlan, you go to a lot of junior games, but we've been away for the juniors this season. It's going to be now semi-pro. How excited are you to get back to watching games? I know, it's exciting. <clears throat> uh, some of the, the teams, you know, they've got a lot of ambition. Uh, kind of, I don't know how Shankers felt, but some of the players might have felt like kind of big fishies in a small pond, whereas now it's a kind of, they can go as high as they want, technically, if these clubs have got the ambition. So I think it's it's a great opportunity for for some of your higher end, kind of your typical teams that were at the top of the junior leagues. So it'll be interesting to see how, how well some of these teams can do. Definitely. We're going to get straight into it. We're going to go to part one, where we're going to take a look at Auckland Lex, Albert, Beath, Largs and Rutherglen. Auckland Lake, we're privileged to have Mark Shanklin here, a member of the Auckland Lake team. Shankers, how's your preparations going into the season? Either they're as good as we can be for for the, the current way that we're living the world just now with, with the whole COVID situation, I think. Clubs and not just our club, but every club in the league is is got so many protocols in place to allow us to, to start this season. And, and we're, we are so grateful that everybody's taking these measures and and basically letting us play play this season safely. And we just can't wait for it to start. Now, as, as I said, we've got Clyde Bank at home in the first game of the season, and, and we're just really looking forward to it now. Brilliant. Lachlan, Auckland Lake have obviously been the, the kingpins in this division for a long, long time. Do you think there's a bit more pressure knocking like this season because of the improvement of other clubs around them? Yeah, aye. But I think they might kind of relish the challenge, to be honest, because, uh, you know, I think well, that used to be in the top dogs. And I know there's a couple of years of no one it, but that's kind of usually down to their fixture pile up. Shankers will know better than anybody. You know, mm-hmm. you're playing Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, you know, every week at times. But I think they'll, I think they'll enjoy it. I think uh, Tommy Sloan's the kind of guy that will. He'll, he'll love the kind of... The, the whole aspect, of, you know, your Darvels and Pollocks, even Clyde Bank, they were doing well before the, the season curtailed uh, kind of last time. You know, I think uh, it'll be good for Talbot. Definitely, definitely. Shankers, what's the thoughts within about the, the emergency of clubs? Like, as Lachlan said, Darvel, Cowan have, have improved this season. What's the kind of thoughts in Auckland Lake? Is it just a case of focusing yourselves? I, I think, as cliche saying, we'll just focus on our own job and all that, but we are aware that there's other teams uh, strengthening what about us as well. And I think that's just the fact that we're moving in and there is a, a carrot dangling in front of the club's faces now, a, a promotion uh, up pyramid system. And I think when you've got that, every team is going to strengthen. And, and you speak about Paul, Clyde Banks, Darvels, and 
know just we've, we've been up there sounds as well, but these teams are hardly new to the division, but also we're aware that, that they're a really strong side, so and they'll be looking to looking to get promoted. Clyde Blank last year was it was a kind of brief season last year, but Clyde Blank were, were unbeaten in what, what games they played. So we are aware that there is team strengthening uh, round about us, but we, we are just focusing ourselves and I think our, our aim is to go up their challenge at the end of the season and I think hopefully fingers crossed we will be. Brilliant. We spoke to Auckland Light Captain Wally Lyle about the upcoming season for Auckland Light Talbot. So we're joined by Auckland Light's Wally Lyle. Wally, it's a pleasure to welcome you back on the show. Thanks for coming on. Cheers, mate. Cheers. How are we? I'm all right, yourself? Aye, all good, mate. You buzzing to get the season started again? I can't wait. Can't wait. It's been a long time coming, so we um, have a week on Saturday and we're, we're into the real stuff, so I'm forward to it. What you, what's the... Uh, What's the kind of thing? What's the kind of thinking been like towards uh, the season? Obviously, you've done the play last season. Has it been a, a sense of just getting back as soon as possible and getting the? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, as I say, it's been far too long into it. No, no, without any fitness, I think. Um, obviously, the big long layoff. Everybody's excited and ready to go. What's the uh, thing? What's the thinking as well about having fans back in the stadium? You wasn't for that. Oh, definitely, definitely. Look. I think there's only 250 at the moment. I don't know if that's going to change anytime soon, but 250 is better than none, that's for sure. And obviously, it helps the club financially, getting some money through the gate. Um, and for, his, for us as players, it's, it's great. Our fans are, are brilliant. Um, they're, they're a wee bit hostile to opposition teams and that as well, so that, that helps us. And it, the, the, the fall is far and wide as well. So, aye, it's great to have them back as well. How excited are you for pre-season? What's the pre-season been like? To be fair, it's not been too bad. I thought we were absolutely battered, but it's not been too bad. We've, um, we were in a couple of weeks and it was you know, a wee bit of running and whatnot. And then, but then the game started, so we played uh, three or four friendlies now, the last one on Saturday. So, but to be fair, it's, it's been no bad. Work. We've done a bit of work, but mostly mostly games, short, short, short games and stuff like that. So it's been, it's been no too bad. Definitely. How about Shankers? How many goals are Shankers going to get this season? Over or under 10? Oh, definitely over. <laughs> over. I'm confident. I think he'll go over 10. Um, he's looking sharp. He's looked sharp in training the last couple of weeks. So, uh, yeah, I, over 10, definitely. What about squad changes? Have there been any changes made to the squad for last season? No, really. We've had a few boys in, in trial, but I don't think anybody's actually signed as yet. Um, we lost, obviously, Gordon Pope. He retired. Mm-hmm. Um Big Dwayne has slots and he's, he's a wee bit problem with his knee or whatever, but hopefully he'll come back. But apart from that, it's pretty much can pretty much the same squad. We've no we've not really lost anybody or um we've not really signed anybody. So I'm quite sure Tucker's got a few a few irons in the fire and maybe there'll be maybe a couple of new faces before the end of the season, uh, the start of the season, sorry. And which Tucker's thoughts can end of the season? I think he I think he's got his, his buzz back, definitely. You can, you can see. Uh, I think like last year, we, we, like when we decided not to play, and we were we were just training like maybe once a week, and then tra- training on a Saturday, it was like you could see he lost a wee bit of enthusiasm, but you, you see he scored a bat now, and I think it's like everybody just just ready and ready to go. But I went quite a bit of SFA membership. What does that mean for the club going forward? Oh, look, 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 the club, the club, the way the club's set up is brilliant now. We've got floodlights and. Uh, Medical things and the things around the state. Honestly, everything's it's, it's, all, it's all geared up for the club to progress. So, hopefully, hopefully, um, have a good season and then progress for them. Hopefully, they get into the leagues because I think that ultimately now that has to be the goal, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. What's the hopes and expectations for the season? Where do you see yourselves? Well, look, we're always we're, we're always there to win things. Everything we enter, we want to win it. So. That is the goal every year. It doesn't matter can, what cup it is or, or whatever it may be. Every every competition we enter, we enter to win. So that is pretty much the goal. Win. Brilliant. Thanks very much for coming on, Molly. Best of luck for the season ahead. Nick the ball, Scott. Cheers, mate. Cheers. We'll move on to Lags Thistle and Lags as well have, a, have an interesting season ahead. Lachlan, what do we think of Lags? Do you think they've got potential to Finished top half this season. <clears throat> it's a tough one. You know, Stuart Davidson's a good manager. Um, you know, you know they're a good team, but it's one of the I think Largs are going to be the one of the teams 
because obviously there's up to eight teams going down out of 20, you know, so it's, I think they're going to be one of the teams maybe looking over their shoulder a wee bit and worrying about that, so I suppose their aim will be to, to avoid that, and then I suppose that kind of comes in with finishing the top half, so I'd imagine that would be their aim, but I think, for what I kind of know of them, they're a kind of young, hungry team, and I think they have got potential to kind of, kind of do well, and I think teams that travel there, they're a bit out of the way, so they've always got that advantage, you know, um, as well. It's a kind of tough place to go, historically. Definitely. Shankers, what's your thoughts on Lars going into this season? Yeah, as Lachlan say, that is a really tough place to go. I mean, if, if we are doing there, if, if you're winning, you're winning by the odd goal. Yeah, I mean, I remember we were up 4-1 uh, the last season that we played in, and, and it ended up 4-3, and yet one minute you're comfortable, the next minute you're seen out the game almost and and I know a few of the boys that they've added in they've added Kim Milliken and, and they've added a boy Jack Paget that I played football with when we were younger I, I spoke to Jack and, and tried to get him to come along to us and and it just shows you that, that he's he's seen Lags as, as a better attraction and a better move for him so it shows obviously what the what Lags are uh, looking to do next season and as uh, Lachlan says Stuart Davidson aren't they he, he was at Lachlan like before he's a good manager took them to the Scottish Cup final a few years ago against ourselves and, and it was a tough game so I think Kim Milligan and, and Jack Haggerty they'll be, they'll be ones to watch for lags this season if, if they're today well I think they'll be the, the front and centre of, of that Definitely We spoke to Kim Milligan of Lags Thistle earlier on and here's what he has to say about Lags' upcoming season so we're joined by Keir Mulligan at Lars Sasso. Keir, thanks very much for coming on. It's a pleasure to have you. My pleasure, Scott. Thanks very much. No worries. How you been? Aye, good. Good. Aye, good. Fitness back, eh? Definitely. First question, are you going to beat Mark Shankland in the goal scoring rankings this season? I think Mark could score me this season. I've scored my whole career. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've scored about, about nine my whole time I've played football. <laughs> Nah, I'll, I'll beat Mark, can you bother? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. How excited are you to have the season back? But how buzzing is it to I've get football back? Three season back, and obviously with a few friendlies, the fans are back. This weather hasn't helped. It's too warm now, isn't it? <laughs> Roasting out here. But no, it's even, we had a friendly Saturday, it's going after, and Port Glasgow last night. It was good, there was fans in the park stadium, and it gives you a wee bit of buzz back about it. Definitely. What's it been like? Or what's it been like keeping keeping fitness levels up since obviously football's been up and down? Uh, Gaffer Arnie was good. He was trying to get us to do five Ks and that, and if trying to try, I mean we were doing them obviously, but it's it's hard because it's hard to motivate yourself when you've no getting to look forward to the end of the week. If you know what I mean, you. But I, I I've got a young team at Lugs. Boys are I think me, me and Addy are th- I'm thirty three, Addy's thirty two, and I think the boys after that's twenty six as old as boys are. It's no idea like training with the young boys. Fat as anything. Dead bit, but I no, but I just try. I, I went in my runs and that, and then you just try focusing your head at saying it's going to come back, you're going to get a play again. So I we're kind of hopefully we'll turn the corner a bit. Brilliant. What's management been like with you? Has it been hard to get back into norm- normality? They were they were all right at first, but they were kind of easy and see now and nah, they're strong and tight on you. If you miss any and that and Miss training. See, I went to London for the football last week and I don't think he was too happy with that. So I, I guess he kind of had that, right, boys? That's how your system He's done your wee things. Now we need to try and focus because the league games will be starting soon. Yeah, definitely. What's, what changes have been made to the squad this season? We've had, we brought a couple of boys in, but we need a few young boys, but I'd say we need a couple of players. We've got most of, most of the squad for last season, probably about 16 or 17 signed players, but we, we could do with a bit of strength. Yeah, definitely. I don't. I, I'm thinking about who. We, I don't think we signed signed MD for this season. I don't think we signed MD. I think we've got a boy, boy, a boy, centre half boy who's saying he was with BSC. And then he's been looking at a few players, but it's still, it's still early days. But it's the terrible thing. It's hard to get. It's hard to bring boys down to lugs. Mm, definitely. What's uh, what's the hopes and expectations for the season? How do you see the season going? We'll probably win the league. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I mean, that's a big thing because we're not in fitness. See, because we, you know what I talk about. We, we don't have the finances that other clubs have. And maybe the pool of big boys in. So the, the biggest thing we do is get fit. See if we're fit. And see, since we started playing the friendlies, I think technically the boys are excellent. Mm-hmm. And our fitness has shown in the last 20 minutes, half an hour of games. And that's what we need to see if we're playing the better teams and we hold our own. We'll need that last half an hour because there's some the teams are looking good. They're looking, the signs of what teams are making and the strength, you like Maybe bring the bring the down to Astro maybe helps us a wee bit playing on it all the time. Maybe like the Astro. 
definitely. Do you think that's an advantage to you is how uh, the park, you think that the pitches are an advantage to you? For me, I've only just started, obviously, I signed to start last season, but right. then we didn't play a lot, and then this season. For me, it's no, yeah, but I think for the boys that have been there, because Lags, I think Lags, I don't think they've lost many games the last couple of seasons at their home park. Mm-hmm. So it's, I de- it's definitely an advantage. They're like a good passing team. Boys are good, like they're passing, and it's, it helps in that kind of surface. Mm-hmm. Definitely. What's your hopes and expectations for the season? How do you see your season going? Will you set yourself targets for? The upcoming season ahead. Just what I do. I'm 33 now, you know what I mean? Maybe just last 15, 10 minutes usually <laughs> I like I want. Any more than that, I'm no. <laughs> no, I just want to just keep fit, play as many games. Why win me? You can play with teams that just want to win every game. You want to play every game. Just compete. That's a big thing. I don't want to go and I want to play the better teams and we compete against them. I want to play a towel, but it's the Davil obviously coming up co-winnings. I want to compete against the teams. Don't I turn up and get beat four or five, nothing in the end of the game? You're like, ah, well, we were playing all collect, they're decent. Do I be saying that stuff? You want to go and say we, you want you want to win their games? I got a draw. I think came off the park. I think we should have beat them. Mm-hmm. But that's a big thing. Go, competing. Definitely. It's my pleasure to be on here. Best of luck for the season ahead. Thanks very much, Scott. Hopefully, talk to you soon. Brilliant. We'll move on to Beath and Beath are a team who won the Scottish Cup a few years ago. Shankers. They've obviously beat East Kilbride in a pre-season friendly, who a lot of people are tipping for the lower league. Could be fly under the radar this season? Uh, I think fly under the radar could be harsh on them because they'll, they'll be one of the teams that is looking to be up in the challenge and I've no doubt about that. They've, they tipped us to the league uh, a few years ago in, in the last day, as you said. They, they won the Scottish Cup. They just recently beat a good uh, East Coast Bride side. I mean, you don't want to look too much into pre-season because you can get a bit ahead of yourself. But I know the manager... Uh, Butch, he, he, I played with him for a good few years and, and I know some of the boys there, they lost a good few players when, when Johnny Muller, the manager, left, Dan Christie, the captain Sheridan, who who were very, very important players for me for over, I think, it was eight, I think Sheridan maybe had a testimonial there, Dan Christie was there for, for eight years or so, so it is, it is big players to lose, but Butch has managed to replace some of the experience, like uh, Ali Park, who was at Clint Afton. Yeah, Callum Watt, who, who was at B before, went back to Horford, now he's back at B again. So the B will, will be looking to be up there challenging. There's still so many teams in the league that will be up, looking to be up there challenging, but, but B will they'll be hoping everybody's talking about all the other teams so as they can go under the radar, but everybody will either certainly be, be one to watch for everybody. Definitely. Lachlan, what's your thoughts on B this season? Aye, Shankill says, I think... <laughs> To say B they'll be under the radar is kind of crazy because how they've been doing the last few years. Because as Shankar says, they won the league. I remember that. I think Talbot, I think was it 2 0 lead he's through away at Cumnock, was it? I don't remember that. Uh, I, no, but. I forget it, maybe. <laughs> no, that's it. But B, they've been such a good team like for years. They're so consistent. So I think it will suit them, you know, kind of no being spoke about. And obviously, as Shanker says, the, the gaffer, he's he's no he's no dafty anyway. He he knows what's going on, and he'll he'll get it drummed into the players for the start. And the way they beat East Kilbride, as much as it's pre-season, like was it ten minutes to go? They were doing two yeah. now. And East Kilbride, as you said, they're the answer. They'll probably win the Lowland League. They're a good team, and so if Beath can can do that against them, you know. Definitely, we spoke to manager Brian Young about the upcoming expectations for Beath this season. So we're joined by Beath manager Brian Young. Brian, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you on. Thanks very much, Scott. No How fault it, buddy. How have you been? Great, mate. Absolutely great. Um, family's been fantastic, you know, and um, well, obviously it's no normal for anybody, but I've loved it, mate. We've been fine, honestly. We've been working. Everything, everything just can't wait till we get back to normal and get back to a wee bit of normality, pal. Brilliant. How excited are you for the season to kick off again? Oh, I'm really excited. I'm just, I'm really, really hopeful that we can just kick off the way that I, I remember it, if I'm being honest with you. Yeah. Get all the restrictions and look, just let us, just let us get back to Norman. And, um, and then that's the only way I can see the season finishing. Like, you know, I can't believe we're getting into a season and talking about, I hope it finishes. It's uh, incredible, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. What's, uh, what was it like last season without fans and how excited are you have the fans back? Last year, when I, I'll look, I've, I'm, I'm not been in management very long, even though this is um, officially my, my third season, um, mm-hmm. which is incredible if I, if I, when I say it like that. Um, but when I first took over, the fans were incredible. And um, actually, if 
think that it helped us through some certain games when I first took over. I know folks say 12, 12 man and all, but realistically, yeah, I think there was times where there was low moments within the game that the fans helped. Now, um, last year, I think we struggled a wee bit with that, where there was maybe games that we had so many draws that if we did have the support, that it would maybe I kicked us on a wee bit. Mm -hmm. So now seeing the fans back in and, yeah, look, we're starting to get that vibe again, mate, and I can't wait for it. I'm really looking forward to it. Brilliant. What's pre-season been like? How Has it been difficult to get the players back into shape for the new season? Nah. Nah, honestly, <laughs> nah. Um, last year was harder. Um, this year, um, uh, we, we feel great. The boys are feeling great. Um, we've kept them going through the lockdown and we try to do like Zoom calls and try and keep PT sessions and keeping the core strong and the boys hated me for it, but um, <laughs> it needs a look. I, I, I was one of them before, so I know what it's like and you're thinking of oh, Gaffer's an idiot, but um, we, it was so important because we had a lot of injuries last year. Now everybody's coming back and they're flying, they're feeling strong, and I can I can up the tempo a wee bit better, so I know it's been great, it's been absolutely fantastic. Last year was a nightmare. We planned full pre-season and uh, my first pre-season and I was all up. I was like, yes, here we go. I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, get the game sorted. And I thought, right, we've got a right good standard, good test. And then, you know what happened? They get scrapped and you right. can only play teams that were on your doorstep sort of thing. So um, this year, we were a wee bit... Uh, what would, what, I'm trying to describe that well. We're just taking it as we go. I never really planned it because I hated the fact where I planned everything, had to scrap it and then chase my tail. Mm -hmm. So we kind of just went with the flow this year a wee bit. But next year, it'll be totally different again, where it'll be probably back to where I did the first year and just plan it. And we know step by step. It was quite difficult, that bit. Squad, I have to yeah, definitely. What changes have you made to the squad? Well, we've made, we've made a couple of signings. There's been a couple in and out. and um, But uh, if I'm being honest with you, I've kept the nucleus. So it's just about keeping the core of the squad. First year, we made, what, eight changes. There was about eight or nine signings. And it's quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so we've kept... The nucleus of squad, we've maybe lost two or three and then gained two or three again. Brought in some youth, a couple of under-20s that um, played last year. They got an opportunity due to injuries, etc. And um, I flourished under it, mate. Really, really flourished. And um, I know like we're talking about this development league and obviously the news of the old ones can play and stuff like that, which is great. But yeah. um, that was a real bonus for me last year, our under-20s development team. Brilliant, superb. So we've signed um, three boys for that, which was uh, superb. They've, they've been great. They've just slid right in as if they've played at our level for such a long time. It's been brilliant. Great maturity for all the lads. Brilliant. Final question. What's the hopes and expectations for the season? How do you see Bede's season going? Mate, listen, I, I wouldn't have took the job if I didn't think we could be successful. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't know anything else, if I'm being honest with you, Scott. I think it's um, one of these questions where if folks say, oh, I just want to stay in the league, and realistically, I hope that you don't get that because they're kidding themselves on. Surely you're going into the league and you want to win it. You want to win everything. And every game of football that I'm playing in, I want to win. Yeah. And, I'm so grumpy when I'm not, but it's just what, it's in, that's what I'm used to. I'm just used to winning and... Um, and I don't want to ever change and see the day that I do that does change I think that um, that's the day I need to give up I think when I'm going into it and I'm content with don't get me wrong you'll get different results and stuff like that that you'll be happy with but I'm never ever going to be content for second place and it's just not my personality you know it's um, and it, the club's been very successful over the last few years so no there's no way that I'm uh, we're going to we're going to try and challenge for the league uh, as being competitive as we can in every competition that we play in, without a doubt. Brilliant. Best of luck for the season ahead, Brian. It's a pleasure to be on. Thanks very much. Amazing, Scott. Thanks so much, Brilliant. pal. Thank Brilliant. you. Cheers, mate. We'll move on to rather than Glenn Cairn. I knew they've been in the, the league a couple of seasons, Shankers. What's your thoughts on them getting into this season? Is it a case of just stay up? I think it, as Lachlan said, and it's no disrespect to a lot of the teams in the league, but this season... There's, there's normally three, two or three teams go down maybe with a playoff and, and some of the, the teams that are coming up, it, their ambition is to stay up, but it, it's going to be a real struggle for for some of the teams this season with, with seven or eight teams going down and it's going to be tough and it's going to be dog eat dog at the bottom of that table, scrapping for points. Every every single point is going to be very important and 
as I said, no disrespect. You don't want to go and be saying at the start of the season, can they need to be watching the draw? But I think teams that are just new in the division for, for a year or two, I think their ambition is is to stay in the league and, and then progress for there. And Rotherham will be no different. It's it's a tough place to go. We've played them, I think, in the Scottish Cup a few years ago, off and left, and it, it's one of the games you just have to grind. Uh, grind them down and get a win the last fixture in the league I think we had we scored in the last minute to beat them 1-0 so it's always a tough place to go and you're always going to have a tough pitch against them so I think if we're going to stay in the division that'll be that'll be job done for them Definitely Lachlan would you go along with that? Aye it's fair enough to say I think I can't even remember exactly but I'm sure the last kind of full season in the juniors I think they were kind of near the bottom when they were they were kind of struggling a bit um, again, you don't want to look at pre-season, but they lost to Hurlford on Saturday, and Hurlford are not in the, the best of places at the moment. So you know, if they're, they're losing games like that, it doesn't it kind of bode well for um, for them going into it. And I think we, what is it up to eight teams, as I say again, going down. It's, it's kind of half the league, you know. It's, it's there's going to be a lot of teams at risk, you know. Yeah, definitely. We spoke to the Rotherham Glencairn manager Wally Harvey about the upcoming season. So we're joined by Wally Harvey, the rather than Glenn Clare manager. Wally, thanks very much for coming on. It's a pleasure to have you. No problem, Scott. Thanks for asking me. Brilliant. How you been? Good. Good, mate. Every day in the sunshine doing it trim with my grandkids. So, yeah, thanks went well. Hi. Brilliant. What's, uh, how excited are you to get the season started? Oh, can not wait for it? can not wait for it? It seems as if it's been a long, long, long time coming. Uh, just so many things happening and so many things happening to so many different people, you know, and, so it's nice to get some positivity rather than some negativity. So no, can it come quick enough? Definitely. Your first season in the the top, the kind of big, the kind of big league was caught before the COVID started. Like, who was your? How did you feel we started this, the first season? Uh, well, we actually thought we were going to start really well, but we were very unlucky. We took a great rain of injuries, but I've never learned for moaning about injuries. I've never ever mentioned injuries when I'm getting asked about things because <laughs> I just feel it's a wee bit unfair to other players that you're bringing into the team and. If you're saying you're not doing well because you've got injuries, I just think it doesn't help the other players out. But we started off reasonably. We had a pre-season where we hadn't been beat all pre-season. Then we went into the league and, well, I say, we took all the injuries. Uh, and we started losing a few games right away at the beginning. But we were only getting beat by the odd goal. Mm-hmm. you know, And and that was way probably about six players who would be normal first-choice players playing. And just as we started to get our players back, COVID shut us all down. So... Uh-huh. So I, I, I was uh, disappointed uh, at the start, but I knew the reasons why they were started the way we did. Yeah, definitely. How excited are you to have hopefully fans back in the stadiums? Well, I, I'm, I'm doing in print as saying that you couldn't really start the season again without fans. No. Due to the fact that the economics of the football alone, the running of the clubs, the running of the football park, you know, I mean... It costs in the regions of a thousand to fifteen hundred pound just to run a team before you even start paying players. No, you know no. it's hefty. So you need the fans in. Plus, other than just the the, the monetary side, of it, it's it boosts the players. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of the fans eh, can cause you to get angry, but at the same time, you either respond one way or the other. So, no, definitely, you, the season had to start with the fans being involved, as far as I was concerned. Yeah, definitely. What has pre-season been like? Obviously, there's been a, a long way off. How's it, how's it been to kind of get the players back into kind of shape for the rest of the season ahead? Well, I actually was quite pleased that the players came back, and, and I've got to admit, I'd say 90% of them came back in a, in a reasonable condition, you know, considering. But I, I think that's probably true for most people, because I think, that's what a lot of people were doing. They were cycling, they were running, and you know, just had, you know, everybody had seen had weights out in the garden doing weights, gyms, and all that. Mm-hmm. You know, so our players came back in pretty good condition. So it wasn't so bad. We didn't even have to work so hard to get them up there. It was more just basically getting the ball, getting them moving with the ball. Uh, and now we're getting the game time, you know. And, and we'd uh, we could beat three, uh, three one by canvas line, but it, Basically, to be honest, it went exactly the way I thought it would go. Right. Some goals we lost, but we weren't sharp. Uh, we gave the ball away too easy uh, in the first half. Second half, we started getting better. Uh, lost the first half 3 nothing. won the second half one nothing. So, uh, we moved on. No, I'm quite happy with the way things have gone so far. Brilliant. What sort of changes have you made to the squad as well? 
Well, there's a couple of changes, goalkeeping changes. Uh, we, we lost one of our goalkeepers, uh, Gary White, who through the season last year was struggling really badly with his back. Right. Uh, he's basically as good as had to get up. You know, he's taking that time out and see if he can get his sail back to his own normality. So that, that was a big, big loss to his. Uh, but we did have a, another crank goalkeeper, uh, Scott McClellan Spider, but obviously we need two goalkeepers. And we had one day, uh, Matt McGinley, who was not happy at East Kilbride. And we had Matt Ways when he was a kid, 18 year old. Uh, but it shows you how good he is. We managed to keep him for two weeks before he went to Morton. You know, so we got him, we got him signed in. That was quite good. Uh, we brought in uh, Reese Pearson, Bird and Meadow in, in the midfield. Uh, with Scott Shields, who was with Kilmarnock in it right back in our centre half. And we're currently looking at our striking options. So we're, we're, we're still, I would say we're still short in the striking option at the moment because uh, we, we lost uh, we, uh, Jay Mackay to Beef, which is a loss to him. We, we, we didn't want to lose him, you know, but things happen in football when we move on and we wish Jay all the best because he's, he's made a good wee servant for us. Uh, but we'll run the rule over another couple of players and we'll see how that goes there the next uh, week or so. Brilliant. What's the uh, hopes and expectations for the season ahead? How do you see the season going for Rutherford? Oh, it's going to be difficult. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to whitewash it and say we're, we're going to win a league and we're going to win this and we're going to win that. It's, I mean, the main problem with this league is seven teams get relegated. No. To me, is is a farce. It's a total farce. There's no league in the world should lose seven teams in one season. You know, they had options. There was options there to get the, the divisions to the levels that they wanted. And to me, they've took the wrong option. Uh, they've put a lot of pressure on a lot of people. Uh, you've got th- I reckon you've got three three leagues happening in the one league. The league where the couple of teams at the top are going to be fighting to win it. The teams in the middle who aren't good enough to win it, but should stay up. Mm-hmm. And you've got the teams at the very, uh, amongst the bottom ones who are going to fight with each other to stay up. Would they classify us? I would classify us, hopefully, boredom on uh, the teams in the middle. Boredom. Uh, if, I'm being, if I'm being sensible, if I'm being honest, uh, I, I'm not going to lie about it. Uh, we're going to have to work our socks off to stay in the division, but I think I'm more than happy that we can do it. Brilliant. Thanks very much for coming on, Molly. Best of luck for the season ahead. No, no problem, Paul. Take care and speak to you soon. And that is part one where we've looked at Auchin Lake, Largs, Beath and Rutherglen. So we will be back tomorrow with our, our second part where we'll look at Arvin Meadow, Clyde Bank, Cumnock and Rob Roy. Shankers, Lachlan, it's been an absolute pleasure for this episode and we'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. <laughs>